<laughs> what did you do to my what phone? Welcome to the Whiskey Tribe. Today, seemingly, is a very, you know, blase subject matter. Mm. Whiskey proof. Oh, I know. Barrel well. proof. So, we're gonna talk about a couple things that you may not know about, but most importantly, mm -hmm. I wanna see if it's possible to turn a whiskey into a Molotov cocktail. Oh, yeah. So, I don't think it is. Hold, hold on. We'll, we'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. Proof. What is proof? We'll start with the simple stuff and then we'll get more advanced that it's stuff that I think a lot of even whiskey enthusiasts don't even really know. What is proof? How much alcohol is in a liquid? Sure. And proof is double percentage of alcohol. It's that So simple. if you see something that says 40% alcohol, it's 80 proof. Right. There's two places that proof comes into play. Okay. One, when you're putting the spirit into the barrel to age it. Yeah. And two, when you're removing it from the barrel and putting it in a bottle. We're gonna get into that real quick, but to technically be considered whiskey in the US, it needs to be at least 80 proof. And that is true. 40% of... alcohol. Almost all Western nations and most others. 40% is kind of the rough floor. Mm -hmm. Now on the high end though, mm -hmm. I didn't know this until recently. What is the maximum proof something can be and still be considered a whiskey? Well, in America, it has to go into a barrel no higher than 125. Okay. Yeah, and I think it's Scotland, it's slightly higher. And But what that's called, by the way, is barrel entry proof. So there's just a limit on the proof that goes into the barrel. Mm -hmm. What it comes out at, uh, nature taking its that's course, nature. it could actually end up being a lot higher? Not a lot, but it could be a little higher. Okay. Typically, you're going to see whiskey come out of a cask somewhere between 50% or 100 proof. Right. And mid 60 to low 60% or 125, 127, 28. Okay, so. Typically. Typically. So what right. are the decision points and factors and why would a distillery choose to put something into a barrel at a high proof as opposed to a low proof? So there's so many variables, but typically, uh, higher proof does a couple of things. One, it decreases angel share slightly, or mm -hmm. it can decrease angel share. You can have, depending on your temperate climate, and again, these are huge generalizations, but depending on your climate, you can have higher evaporation of water. Also, storage space, which is not as big of a deal for people like us, but if you have a million barrels, yeah, right, like, you know, some of the big distilleries, and you can gain uh, three to 10% storage space per, you know, the proof range, that's gonna result in a lot of real money. On the other hand, yeah. alcohol will actually pull different things out of the wood based on the alcohol content, and then also based on the size of the barrel and the climate it's in. See, this is what interests me. You actually need to consider what kind of flavors are you going for, because- Absolutely. Lower proof, this is drastic oversimplification, and it's dangerously wrong. Chill out. Yeah, but, assuming all weather is the same for everyone in the yeah. world, if and you, everyone's using the same size barrels. If you're putting in a lower proof uh, alcohol into a barrel, you're generally going to get, was it the sweet? More of the wood sugars. Sugars, okay. And uh, and often more of the colors, but uh, more of the aromatic compounds. Okay. You know, your vanillas and your, your pretty things, So the, right? the sweeter, friendlier things. Right. And now higher proof, you're going to get a little more of the barrel tan, the barrel notes. Okay. Right, that more tannin heavy and that kind of direction. Okay. Uh, now also size of barrel matters, right? Right on. So you'll have a higher loss in smaller barrels than typically than you will in a larger barrel. Can I be done learning now? Well, then there's bottle proof. Barrel proof and bottle proof. Now you're done. You've aged your whiskey, it's done. Let's say it's here in Texas uh, and it's now ringing in at 60% alcohol or 120 proof. Okay. We've had a little bit of evaporation. It's only two years old, but it's really dark because of the heat in Texas. Um, and maybe we were using smaller barrels. Well, now what are we gonna do? Are we just gonna bottle it? What you're gonna do at this point is you're gonna make two decisions. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make the decision over at what proof does this taste the best and or money and sales visibility dis discussions. See, that's the other thing because oftentimes distilleries are going to 40% because they can stretch their product as far as possible and maximize profit. Yes, and that's absolutely what's going on. Now, does now, it make it bad whiskey? No, just because they went for the most whiskey they could get to you know, maximize profit, Sure. it doesn't mean it's a bad whiskey, yeah. right? It could be really great. My experience is that when you get a cask strength release from that same distillery, yeah. it's usually better. Or when you get a higher proof release, it's usually better. And again, better right. is it better is subjective Our, because the rule is the best I whiskey, prefer. the best whiskey is the, the whiskey you like to drink, the way you like to drink it. Whenever you're starting out, some people may actually prefer the lower proofs because it's just not tossing them around the room with that heat from the alcohol there. Yeah, I hear you clinking. I hear you getting new well, whiskey. Well, I'm trying to find an example of something and I don't know if I can. Oh, you can do it. I believe.
got it? Yeah. <laughs> Red Breast 12 is at what? Red Breast 12. Now this, if I remember right, is 46. This is one. Oh, it's four. <gasps> this is a 40% whiskey. And this red is breast, such a good 40% whiskey. Red breast cask strength. See, that's just proof that wow. 40% doesn't equal yeah. bad whiskey. Okay. Red breast cask strength okay. is at. That's 58.2. Yes. That's damn near 60. That's. You can do math. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. That adds a whole new layer. It does. Now all of a sudden you have brown sugar and oak. Yeah. Oh, and then it's just much more. It, much more intense. And There's a lot more flavor going on. with the flavor there. But again, it is also hotter with the alcohol. Right. So people starting out, they may want to gravitate towards the lower proofs there. Um, the only thing I want to do is make a Molotov cocktail that is technically, legitimately considered a whiskey. So for it to be considered a whiskey. Any whiskey? Because light whiskey counts. What do you mean? Well, there's not any proof limit to the part of the whiskey that was neutral, gray neutral. So it's a blend, right? So the whiskey part of the blend still okay, has shut all up. the same rules. We're gonna go to the distillery. You ready? I was born ready. Okay, so here's what I had Deb do. Okay. The highest proof stuff we could possibly get. Off of the still? Off of the still. So what is still. it? This is 175 proof. You're totally sure? 100, so yes, she did okay. the, the thing. That 175. Now. I don't want to do any kind of like whiskey category. It's like a flavor whiskey, light yeah. whiskey. I want straight down the middle, legitimate, the rule book. This is a whiskey whiskey. Okay. And you so, said there is a there's a couple of criteria. Let's Eat. proof it down to 125. 125. And then put it into a barrel, a small barrel for you know, 60 seconds. <laughs> uh, two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. Two minutes because. The law is, as long as it's aged in new oak, it's whiskey, but there's no minimum time limit on that in the stated law for just generic whiskey. And so this will be a malt whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it's a TV trope, a video game trope, a movie trope to have somebody in like a fight and then they grab any liquor off the shelf and they stuff a bar rag in it and they light it on fire and they yeah. throw it against something and it explodes. <laughs> it's like, ah! <laughs> no. Now, historically, things like um, kerosene and gasoline, and they would like add motor oil to thicken it up so it would stick better. There's a lot of different ways to make a Molotov cocktail, but we're gonna see what happens with a legitimate whiskey whiskey, and then see if we need to tweak it a little bit. All right. It's probably gonna leak a little bit. Well, it's not hydrated, so it's going to leak, but it's okay. That's the water. We gotta move quick. There's the water. High proof alcohol. Easy, easy. This is sweet nectar. Okay, okay. Cap it. We're standing it on the end. Is it still leaking? Yep. Oh, Let's turn it on the other side. <laughs> still leaking? Because you are the wind <laughs> beneath my. <laughs> All right, aged to one song. That's long enough. Is it officially whiskey? Sure. Topped out, it was, you say, 120 proof? Mm -hmm. 100, was that 125. 125 proof. Aged, aged in New Oak Barrel. Yeah. You ready? Yep. I'm actually really looking forward to this. Because so many people are searching for episodes about whiskey proof. Yeah. It's an instant so smash, many. smash hit viral video right here. <laughs> Do you doubt my ability to Molotov cocktail this bottle on this barrel? On this barrel. I do. What are you gonna give me whenever I inevitably Molotov cocktail that bad boy? Uh, a sloppy wet kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Should we check to see if this stuff lights before we try to break it? So the makings of Molotov cocktail, you have what's called uh, the wick, right? Which yeah. is usually like a rag. In the right. movie, some people will use paper. We're gonna use tube socks. Oh, a tube sock. These are brand spanking new, and you need to get this wet. The technique here. Come on now. That smells like my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while we're doing this, yeah. uh, nobody try this at home. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. We have a fire department at the bottom of the hill. We have a hose right here. We also have a fire two extinguisher. fire extinguishers. Good, we're starting to get the, oh yeah. So that's nice and damp. All right. Now get the sock, that's where the action. Ow, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> These are the worst tube socks in the world. You know, if we were in a revolution, we would have died by now. <laughs> I've been so dead. I name palmed my finger. Viva la revolution. <laughs> <laughs> 
We need like something that actually catches. Tip number two, this is an actual bar rag. This is a cotton bar rag. Okay. And this is closer to what you would do in an actual bar. Just grab a bar rag and yeah. then slowly and cl clumsily <laughs> stuff it in a bottle. It's going to uh, burn like a candle wick. I think that's pretty wet. The enemy is patient. They'll wait for you to do this. Yeah, totally, while they're shooting at you. Is it lit? It's going. Now we got catch. flame. Y'all ready? Okay. You ready? See if you can do it. <laughs> it broke. Now he's got a wet ground and a burning rag. <laughs> Which would scare the hell out of the enemy. No. It's burning, but the flame is really light and thin. Barrel entry correct proof. Yeah, it's not really a thing. It's not, not high enough for a Molotov cocktail. This is the 175 proof. That's going. Woo! That's going. You ready? All right. <laughs> it was a good hit and it's completely shattered and the alcohol is definitely burning. Well, look, look, this is, is on fire insane. now. Yeah, it's that? burning. Oh, the, the ground is on fire. Hey. I just want to see some stuff blow up. I'm okay with that. We have been denied Molotov, whiskey Molotov cocktail glory, yes. time and time again. This time, put gasoline in a closed container and light it, which you should never do. Yeah. It has about one fifth whiskey in yeah. there. <laughs> so, technically, it's a whiskey Molotov cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. You want to see it blow up? I mean, I, I do. How do you <laughs> like that? What do you? Help me out. <laughs> no. Help me get it soaked. <laughs> oh! Oh! Apparently, you guys got really good whiskey bottles. This is historically accurate. Oh, I did something. Well done. Boom. <laughs> now that I have some experience, I don't feel bad in throwing one. Right? I'm gonna fill it up, mostly gasoline. Oh, there it goes. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> Little pellet gun? Right? Just, I don't know if it's gonna. Nothing too ridiculous. We'll see. we'll see if we can. I got you some pellets. Thank you. You got a lighter? Okay. Right. Yeah. That didn't do anything. Your pellet gun is not very Quick, powerful. Throw rocks at it. <laughs> oh! My oh! Dickhole. What did you do to my phone? <laughs>